All right, so now that we, we did some basic stuff, uh, let's take a look at how to navigate an array. This is array access. And I said that there's gonna, there are two ways of accessing an array. One is indexed access, which is the easy one. And let's first focus on index and then we'll look at the pointer based access. So, so uh, what I'm going to do is um, actually uh, to, to make this interesting, we will take this PF3 buff. This is the buffer that we declared previously. Uh, we call this PF3 buff. Uh, it's a uint8 underscore t of, of some size, whatever the size is. Size in this case happens to be 20. So what we will do is we will we will initialize this buffer to be uh, to to have some dummy values to start with. We will initialize this buffer. So let's look at our code here. This is our our C version of the code. Uh, so in our code. Uh, I'm gonna uh, call this function called init state uh, with an index space. So the, here's our code for doing it. And so let's grab that guy from here. So this is our index space initialization of an array. And we will we will see both the, the assembly version and the C version. So this is our C version. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we use this notation, which is the the notation we are using is um, the notation we are using is um, is the the uh, the array followed by the index. This is the notation, right? This is what we've seen in SM, in in assembly. So we simply are iterating to this array for i equals zero to i less than the size of the array, i plus plus, and every time we want to access an element, we just use the uh, PF3 buff of i equals and we're setting it to a particular value. So so at the end of this, the all elements in this buffer are going to get the same value, which is an FF. So let's see how we do this in assembly. Uh, to see the assembly code, I'm going to introduce uh, a neat little trick in assembly, which makes the code look almost C-like. So let's go to our code for our initialization in assembly. This is our initialization in assembly. Uh, I will grab this guy from here and this is the code and uh, this is the exact what my best uh, approximation of what the code would be in assembly. So so I'm introducing a new uh, in, in new pseudo op or an assembler directive right now and this new assembler directory is, directive is called the RN. RN stands for register number. So so uh, if you if you're going to be referring to register number zero, you can refer to it as R zero from here after this point. You can refer to register R zero as R zero, and or you can just call it I. So for example, uh, if I want to set the value of of R zero to zero, I can do either move R not pound zero, or I could also do move I pound zero and uh, clearly this reads much better right this reads better because we are we are we, we, we don't have to make an association of r naught as being the index we have explicitly um, uh, referring we are explicitly referring to it by its word i so it's gonna re it reads better so so and uh, and I I uh, use three registers here. I'm going to call that the index reg I. Uh, this is my in initial value, which happens to be FF. So I'm going to put some value in there, and then uh, this is the base of my array. So I'm using two as my base of my array, right? So that's called my array base. So I I go into my code. This this line here is the same as. Um, getting uh, FF into this is this is getting FF into some register. This is setting I to initial value, and now I'm writing my code. So uh, this one line of code that we have here, this one line of code here, is being being uh, the equivalent of that is these two lines of code, which are my I am going to get my uh, R two uh, P three buff into a register R two. Um, and then I'm going to use the P3. I could, I should have really called this. I meant to do this differently. Um, 
actually. I meant to do that. I meant to call this guy Array Base. I don't know what happened to. I'm gonna, I meant to call that Array Base. Uh, uh, actually, let's let's do that. I'm gonna go in here, and I thought I modified this file, but for some reason, it's still showing as. So let's. That's fine. Let's call this P3 buff. Uh, let's call this guy. I think I did it on one but not the other. So that's what the problem was. I did it on the other one but not this one. So let's call that. All right, so now that reads much better. So let me grab this guy from here that's my code let's put it back onto this okay there's our code um, so we we are accessing it this line of these this line almost reads exactly like this line so this one line here looks almost exactly like that line because they, uh, the C and assembly don't look very different because this is saying store byte in it in it value being 0xff uh, to this location which is the array base which happens to be P3, pf3 buff because we initialized to that right here and with an offset of i so this is a base plus offset that's your base plus offset addressing mode or we also call that the indexed addressing mode so it's a pretty straightforward uh, 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 translation from C to assembly. Now the rest of the code is the same. Uh, I'm comparing I against the size and if the size is, uh, if I is less than the size, then I have more to do. If there's, if it is greater than size, then I come out. Now, uh, because I am, uh, I am messing up uh, registers R0 and R, R1 and R2 as part of my code here, I am doing the simple step of, uh, of Kali saves. We're saving those registers because we messed up those registers here. Now, let's take a look at another way of accessing it. So, so if you see what we really did in this, and um, let's let's uh, let's summarize how indexed way index space work. So, if you indexed access, what we are doing is we are our array we are tethered to the base this is our base we are tethered to the base and we are navigating the array one step at a time by go making our i equal zero the first then we make it go to one then we make it go to two so we take the base whatever the base is and the i and the i keeps changing from zero one two and so on and the the uh, the equivalent in assembly is we we use the the base uh, plus offset addressing mode to access it right that's the idea so how does this differ from a pointer based access so in pointer based access pointer access and i'll first show you a picture of it and then we'll we'll look at the code in pointer based access we will we will look at our array, we will walk as we walk the array, right? We will not be tethered at the, at, we'll start at the, at the start, but we will keep moving. We won't, we won't change, we won't have an index associated with it. We will update the pointer, we'll go access that. Then next we will access that. Then next we will access that. So our, our addressing mode will be a pointer. This will be a pointer with no offset because offset is always zero. We'll just use a pointer here. So the pointer will initially point to, this is my pointer, it will initially be there. Then I go to the next item, I'll move it up, I'll keep moving it up. So the pointer is the one that's moving as we keep going along. So that's a, that because it points to the data, we call it pointer. Pointers are nothing but, so the pointer is nothing but an address. So it points to the data. So how does the code look like? So let's take a look at um, the C code first and I will introduce some a term. Um, and here is our C code. So this is a this the same same example, but I have a 
another routine here that says pointer based array access so this is a pointer based array, uh, array access so let's let's uh, copy this code here and here's my code and again i'm going to show you both the c version and the assembly version and this is my assembly version uh, this is called this is my assembly version down here and uh, in the assembly version uh, let's go grab this guy from here this one has everything uh, properly named and so I don't have to worry about changing anything here so this is the assembly version and what we are doing again is um, is we start off with our PT so our PT initially so this is my array of this is my P P F 3 buff so this is my P F 3 buff and this is the zeroth location and this is the one location, but I'm not going to use the index at all. So I'm going to set something called PT. PT, in this case, PT is initialized. PT is an actual memory location. It's initialized to whatever this is. If this happens to be, let's say, 0x200500, then that value is put here. Right? That's what my initialization is. That is this part. This is the initialization. And then I'm going to keep checking if, if I reach the end. How do I know what the end is? Well, the end location is, is I, I look at the size minus one element, the size minus one element. Where is the size minus one element? Now, I am introducing a couple of uh, no notations here. We will, we will uh, go through pointers in much more detail. But for now, just the notation you will use is I, this is the, this is the last element and the ampersand here is the is read as the address of so this is a uh, no, new new uh, symbol we're using this ampersand is not the ampersand that that is the and operator it is not the and logical and operator when you put an ampersand in front of something and if you want to, if you want to be more precise think of this as an ampersand as a unary operator this is a unary ampersand as opposed to an operator between two when you put an ampersand in between two variables v1 and v2 this is a binary because it is it is taking two two operands we call it a binary operator the unary operator ampersand is has a connotation of address of so it's going to get you the address of that so we 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 started off pointer to be here and we're going to keep moving it we will add one to it so pt plus plus will add one add one more add one more so every time we add we're checking if we reach the reach the end yet or not so it, yeah, as long as PT is less than or equal to this, the address of the last element, we will keep doing it. Now, the other other thing we introduce, so this is the first thing we introduce this notion of an address of. So the other thing I'm introducing here is, is how do we declare something as being a pointer? So PT has been declared. I declared here, I said u int 8 underscore t star PT. Right. So if I didn't do anything, this is what it would look like. So this is a declaration. What does this tell the system? It's saying that PT is a pointer to a unsigned 8-bit unsigned integer. But being a pointer, actually, it does take it. This pointer, when it's declared, it takes up actually four bytes. It takes four bytes because pointers are addresses. And remember, pointer is all pointers. Pointer is just an address. And addresses on our machine are always 32 bits. But the the way we declare it is we don't say hey i want a pointer to be of 32 bits you don't have to tell that because the computer the compiler already knows that but you have to tell the compiler what type of data you're going to point to because because if you're going to be pointing to a 8 bit 8 bit num 8 bit number then the compiler can check to make sure that you're always pointing to an 8 bit number 
The other thing that the compiler does is this PT++. And, and we'll see why the PT++ is, is going to increment that that is a loaded increment. And we'll see what that means in just a second. But let's let's um, let's uh, look at the assembly equivalent of that. The assembly equivalent of this code is I start off again. This statement here is exactly the same as that statement here. But except now I'm going to use this register called a AR ARRPT as this is going to be my pointer. This is going to be my pointer. It's going to hold the address of the I, the element I'm going to be pointing to. I start there and I also loaded the endpoint. I, I I calculated the endpoint, which is going to be my my this point here, this address here. So now the rest of the code is I store the byte, which is this step here. This step here is the same as this line here, right? I'm just storing the value. Um, and uh, and the next one is to increment. So this line here, this uh, add add line is the same as that, which is to increment it. This is a compare. The compare is comparing against that. And it's saying if it's less or same, then there is more work to do because less or same is that right there. If it's less or same, I have more work to do. Otherwise, I'm going to come out of my code. Again, I'm using R0, R1 and R2. So I did collie saves in both of these cases. Now, let's let's start here and ask ourselves, what would what would this code look like if I were if I were doing pointer based access or index based access. But if I were modifying the times array, remember the times array that we declared the times array, if you re recall the times array is it has elements. So you it look like this u int 16 underscore t times of of size. So what would happen if I were modifying this array? Right. So if I were modifying this array, my let's say in my for loop, I'm again uh, using something like this. I'm saying for u int eight underscore t. This is an index based one, but don't worry about this. Uh, in the index based one, I would go. Um, I would go i equals zero. Uh, i less than size. I plus plus. And I would simply say times of i equals zero x because it's now a four bit. Uh, it's a it's a two bytes, and I would write something like that. Right now, it's in assembly in C. I don't have to worry about the fact that this is of 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 a uh, of a uh, uh, of. 16 bits and not eight uh, it's it's 16 bits wide because the assembly the assembler knows that now uh, the the compiler knows that but if i were doing this in assembly in assembly how does this line look like well first thing it has to be a strh because i'm storing a 32 bit number that's another thing and this, when I move from one location to other location, I increment and I go to the next location. This won't be an I plus plus. Normally, it would have been an add I plus one, right? But now this will be an add. Uh, it'll have to be an add I. It'll have to be an add I pound two. The reason it has to be a pound two is because my each element, this is the precision of each element. The precision of each element is two. So it'll have to be an add i pound two. So those are the fundamental difference you have to do. But you have to do that. It, the onus is on you as the programmer to do that. So this is if you're doing index based. Now, how, do, how would it be if I'm doing pointer based? Remember again, in the case of pointer based, this, this, the same code will look something like this. This is my pointer based. In my pointer based solution for the times array, uh, it'll be like this. It'll say for u int 16 underscores t star pt equals, this is going to be my times buffer. So I'm going to say times and 
I will walk through my array. I'm going to say if as long as PT is less than or equal to the times array, the end of the array, which is size minus one. But remember, I have to put the all important ampersand in front of it because I'm comparing the address of. So I put the ampersand in front of it. And then I, I say, when you, you're done, do a PT plus plus. Now, I don't have to, I still say PT plus plus, but the compiler knows that this, this is a pointer to a 16 bit number. So when it does this PT plus plus, it will increment it by, by, uh, by uh, two rather than increment it by one. So that is our, that is our code. And then we do a star PT equals zero X F F F F. So this is our code. Um, this is a curly brace here and a curly brace here. So how does the assembly, how would the assembly be? First thing is again, this has to be a str, um, it has to be an strh. Whenever we do the store, it has to be an strh. But the other important thing is the array pt, if you guys remember this, this step here, this was an array PT plus one. The, now we won't, we won't be doing an array PT plus one. This guy here is not gonna be a plus one. Instead, he's gonna be a, oops. This array PT, when we do an array, array PT, uh, we won't, when we add an array PT, we will add pound two to it because we are responsible for it. C takes care of it, but you have resp you're responsible for doing this because this is a pointer arithmetic that corresponds to, again, the precision. The precision here happens to be our data type of 16 bits. So I have to move, move to the next address. The next address is not one byte away, but it's two bytes away. Okay, so now let's just run this code and I want to show you how what the what the debugging functional debugging part of this is. So I'm going to uh, debug this and uh, this is something that um, this is how we watch uh, stuff in in on our machine. So uh, you will notice you will notice that though this code is not um, though I'm using this uh, these declaring these variables uh, as going in RAM and ROM, I'm still exporting them. I put these export statements and you may have, uh, may remember the word export is used to link files. We're not linking anything here, but this export has also an additional benefit, which is Kyle, which is the, com the Kyle um, compiler, uses these export statements and says, oh, you're exporting this, so I know these words and I know what they mean in C. So if I want to watch them, all I have to do is pop up a memory window. And this, this is what I did here. Uh, if you look at your windows here, one of them is a watch window. There's another one called a memory window. If you hit this, this is the first memory window. I opened four memory windows just to show you what the contents are. So this is memory window for my, uh, for my P, F3 buff right now it has all zeros in it because it is uh, it has been initialized to all zeros to start with I haven't run the code yet so I'm gonna put a breakpoint in my code I'll put a breakpoint right here where my call to the index is going to happen so I'm gonna run this code right now it's still zero so let's enter this subroutine and see what happens if I enter the subroutine this is my this is my index based uh, access. So every time I do the first store byte will change that to FF, which is what I wanted. The, the next one, if I go continue this, the second access is to my second location, which is FF. So I can watch the memory window and it'll tell me exactly what these are. Now I can, I'm also showing you these other ones just to show you that you not only can watch the uh, the RAM variables, you can also watch the constants that are in the in the uh, ROM and simply by putting an ampersand in front of it. The ampersand again, remember, is the address of. So I put the address of memory, the memory window. Once you put the address in some location, it'll show you the contents of that. Now, I shrunk these windows to just show you the relevant stuff. Like for example, the primes window, I only shrunk it, but 
in reality it'll show us more than more than just those four values so so let me show you what i mean by that so the memory let's shrink let's make let's make this guy bigger it's actually showing me values outside of it i just shrunk it to show you only the first four four values here the seven primes here and the string greet here and this last location in greet which is 2 AD has the zero in it, which happens to be the zero I put, which is this zero. And zero doesn't display as a character, so it just shows it as a dot. But that dot is actually a new, if I change the data type here to non-ASCII, if I make it decimal, it'll show me, uh, where is that? If I change it from ASCII to decimal, I uh, let me see if I can make it uh, unsigned int so you will actually see that it'll show me a value of zero right there that's the zero value right there which happens to be uh it, which if i now change it back to ascii you will see and i'm gonna shrink it just so that you i can fit just one character in here so you'll see how the joe followed by the the last thing which is happens to be a zero which is the dot because it can't print the it's not a printable character in the ascii table so it just shows you as a dot yeah all right so let's run this code uh, i'm gonna continue it and um, this is my initial state i initialized everything so once i finish this initialization let me put a breakpoint here on the save state and i'm gonna continue so I reach this point. At this point, the buffer has been completely initialized. So what this, what we're doing here is functional debugging. In this case, we are checking to see every time I flip the flip the PF3 bit, I'm gonna save the state. If I save the state, this value should change right now. So if I just step over that, you'll see that it was zero. And that's the current state of my PF3. Now I'm gonna let it run and I'm gonna run it again and it ran and so you'll see that it's it's it has um, flipped it to one and it stayed at one for a while and now i'm going to dump the state uh into the buffer i'm going to dump the state into the buffer and so the next one will be an eight and so we keep repeating this and if i take this take this uh point off <coughs> And then as time goes on, you will see in the logic analyzer that it's being flipped on and off. And if I stop at some point, at this point, actually, I filled filled 19 of those values. The last value has not been filled yet because that is still an FF. So if I just step over, um, so I'm going to come out of this subroutine and again, put a breakpoint on my um, on my save state here. And I'll continue. And you will notice that this last a step that I take will change that one value, which is a, a hexadecimal. This is 2013. My buffer started at x 2000000. This is the 20th or 19th element. This is the 0th element. That's a 19th element. 19 being 16 plus 3, which is what you expect in hex right there. So that is the last element and it's been updated. So we have proof that the code is indeed doing what it's supposed to do. We can also check that the timing is correct. I wrote a delay function here, which is being called. The delay, I'm expecting it to be 250 milliseconds, and we can even test that. So I'm gonna see in my logic analyzer if this is indeed the case. So I, I, I drag this, uh, make sure you turn the cursor on, and you will see that it's around 0.25301414. So it is around, 0.25 uh, seconds, which is 250 milliseconds, which is what I expected this this to do. Right? Um, if I were, if I didn't have a logic analyzer, I could have dumped the time values, which we will learn later. Uh, and I could have actually had two arrays. One is a timing array, and another is a is a state array, and it would show me exactly the same information. Now. Uh, this is the assembly version. Uh, I will uh, leave leave it to you to run the C version and watch variables just like you do. Play around with it. Um, I have not added any um, any uh, watch windows like I did uh, uh, in in assembly uh, because I put them down here uh, in my code. So you will see that uh, the unlike unlike. Uh, 
uh, assembly c is c is much more uh, much more uh, agile in that uh, i can watch my variables in a watch window rather than having to look at in the memory window so i can see all of them here there's my howdy joe there's my pf3 buff i can show them on in my i can i can simply right click on my variable uh, wherever my variable is and i can say add it to my watch window i can say pf3 add it to my watch window and i can say watch 2 and it's this is the 20th element but i can also type in values here like for example i can say give me what pf3 buff uh, the address of let's say the 10th element of my buff and i can even put an ampersand in front of it this will tell me what the address of the 10th element in my well in my uh, buffer is so that's telling me that the 10th element is at 2001a which is exactly what 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 is a uh, position in the in memory of that element all right this was a long video i uh, i did not uh, did not men mean to make it long but um but hopefully it works out for you guys and uh, i will pa stop right here